Hello, my wonderful friends. How how's everybody doing? You guys okay? You doing good? I can't hear you. I, I know for a second there, you're just like, if I, if I answer, would you? No, I won't. Not unless you type it in the comments. Then I will, but not till later. Anyway, this is a story uh, by Reddit user One Chord Bassist. This is Neckbeard Vignettes. I collected over time. Ooh. Yo, Moon Horse. What's up, baby? I already posted these in r slash Tales of Neckbeard, uh, my old haunt. But I really wanted to hear them narrated in your wonderful voice. Well, you're too kind. Not sure if the format works that well with the narration, though. There are just a few vignettes that didn't quite make it to full stories, either because they happened so long ago, and otherwise bad circumstances that I've forgotten most about them, or because they're second-hand accounts. I don't have a problem with that. Part 1. Lego Beard. I have a long history of mental illness. When I was about 17, I was hospitalized for the first time. The section I was in specialized in minors and very young adults, up to 20, in rare cases up to 24. And most of my fellow patients were the nicest people I'd ever met. Back then, I was a cringy nice guy myself, but at least I knew how to work a shower and not shout out every sexual thought that comes into my head. Lego beard? Well, not so much. He was about 15 at the time, so a lot of his symptoms might have mitigated over time from then on. Lego Beard had a bowl cut that looked like he dunked his head in olive oil every day, and so did the rest of his skin. The last part is semi-excusable since, you know, teenagers gotta grow out of the acne fields because what else would you do at that age when you're bored and lonely and if your face isn't covered in pimples and caked with grease, that looks like a tiny layer of some sort of molten cheese. That's an entirely different thing. And so is the crustache. That combined with his monobrow gave him some sort of Frazetta-style caveman look, which was made even worse by him never closing his fucking mouth. He'd wear a heavy leather jacket with a sheep wool collar, baggy olive green jeans, and ratty moon boots moon boots? I don't know what that is. In the middle of August, he would bring his entire Lego collection to his hospital room. Most of us had singles at the time, and yeah, we all took our hobbies with us, and nothing wrong with collecting and even playing with Legos, whatever age you are, but taking your entire collection to the hospital with you is a little strange to do as a teenager. He also suffered from very noisy reflux, which would be triggered at every meal. He would chew with his mouth open, and when he was finished, he would just sit there staring at us like Gomer Pyle on the latrine did at the sergeant in full metal jacket, only with his mouth half open. His reflux would switch on, and we'd sit there listening to the gassy liquid comments of his stomach slowly gargling along his esophagus. Ugh. Not quite burping, although he had no shame about that either, but still very audible. We asked him a few times to just close his damn mouth. Well, it lasted maybe five minutes each time. He also farted during lunch and dinner a few times and didn't understand why people didn't like it. He would brag about how he only showered once a week and once a month with soap and shampoo. That's disgusting. He would invite girls from the section into his room alone. Alright, <laughs> we're technically we're not allowed to do that, but staff usually went Sergeant Schultz on us like I see nothing unless things got a little creepy, you know what I mean? I never asked about it, but nobody would step foot in there more than once. Around Christmas, we sold waffles at the hospital's Christmas market, and we had those little caps that would barely catch uh, hair from falling into the dough. Well, guess who refused to wear his hat? Yeah. His excuse? <sighs> Makes me look like a flathead. His literal choice of words. I should have told him what we all thought, but the hat didn't change much there, but since none of us did, why would breaking that news be my responsibility? Part 2. The Legionnaire. This is a story a buddy of mine told me about his former flatmate. 
The Legionnaire's shape was approaching a sphere of two meters in diameter, with a doughy, weirdly beardless face drawn near the North Pole, an oil-drenched mop draped over said North Pole for further comedic effect. The Legionnaire, for some reason, had a very long backstory of thousands of things that he did in his past. He was a dance instructor once, he was also a cop, and yes, he was in the French Foreign Legion. No explanation how someone who worked in these professions that demand people to understand how to keep a healthy weight and decent hygiene, one of which is actually infamous for its superiors wrecking your body thoroughly if you fail to present an impeccable shape, would end up with neither of these things. Not that he was smart enough to understand people would see right through it. This guy knew someone in the apartment would always be awake, walking around, and they knew exactly when he left his room and when he returned. He still bragged about how he constantly had those one-night stands with hot young women in his room, sometimes multiple simultaneously. Pretty sure if he ever managed to get it up for more than half a minute, it was an event as big as a threesome would be for other people. The King... Part 3. The King of Decoratus. I don't think I said that right. My former neighbor, current flatmate with my ex-flatmate. I was hesitant to call him a neckbeard because he's legitimately mentally stunted, but recently she told me a few stories about him that made me reconsider my stance. His body shape matches that of the two former specimen only that his hair is jet black, as opposed to Lego Beard's dirty brown and the Legionnaire's blonde, and he wears the actual randomly distributed patches of overgrown peach fluff all over his neck and cheeks. My ex flatty's not one to judge a lot, and takes a lot for her to really hate someone, but K.O.D. actually managed to break her. Years ago, long before her transition, he actually looked up to her because when she still presented as a man, she would cultivate a rather masculine appearance. Kept her head bald, in fact for a long time, I believe she had hair loss when she was in her 20s, but started growing it out as dense as mine, and I'm very blessed in that department. Or stashes, spent half her time in the gym, etc, etc. Of course, things like that would impress K.O.D., and my ex Flatty thought that he actually liked her as a person. Turned out all he really needed was a male leader. Once she couldn't be that male leader, she wasn't worth anything to him, but as a victim, bully victim to be more specific. But by that time, he had already moved in with her. There are three people in that apartment. X Flatty is the one who has a remote idea of how to behave like a person. They don't have toilet paper in their bathroom because the other two would do weird hijinks with it. So everyone just keeps a stash in their room and takes a roll with them when they need to drop off the city of Cleveland into the Chungahua Basin. <laughs> that's, a, that's a new one for me. <laughs> from what X Flatty told me, KOD doesn't even remember the last time he had a solid shit. And if you think... She ever saw him take a roll of paper with him, you assume too much. To be quite honest, I would be more surprised if she told me that he did wipe. X Flatty and I are massive bleeding heart lefty activists. Well, less of an activist and more of a mass debater. Haha, <laughs> in my case. And of course, she would from time to time take him to political rallies and autonomous centers. K.O.D., dumb as he is, vaguely understood that those things have to do with politics and that those politics aren't exactly mainstream, but he didn't understand what specific politicians an autonomous center deals with. Cue him proudly explaining that Hitler wasn't really that bad if only he had started the war. Fucking what? The only reason X Flatty was still allowed there afterwards is because she herself had done a lot for the club, and her comrades knew she had taken him with her out of pity. Unsurprisingly, KOD complains about how he's still a virgin at almost 40. He also has a literal attraction sign. No! Oh my god. Only that it's... 
only that his is a t-shirt that, I guess, was actually white when he had it printed. Said print consists of painfully kitschy hearts encircling the statement that he is single, followed by his phone number. Oh my god. Oh, I can't believe people have actually started doing that. That is amazing. Part 4. Mr. Uncle. I call him Mr. Uncle because his favorite band name includes the word uncle. Said band is infamous for having the most insufferable fans in all of German-speaking Europe. They're as trashy as the worst stereotypical juggalos, as pretentious about their lack of education, no less, as the worst stereotypical tool fans, and mentally bland as the worst stereotypical nickelback fans, as self-righteous, as pointly aggressive as the worst stereotypical Pantera fans, you get the idea. Holy fucking shit, that sounds horrible. I'm already scared. Not trying to insult people who like those bands, but I really don't have any sympathies for the people who make their identity and ideology out of just liking a thing. And just to be sure, wearing their shirts or cosplaying does not count as making an identity out of it. That just means you really like that thing. What I'm specifically talking about is consistently airing their victim mentality over people who don't like their music or are annoyed with said victim mentality in the first place. Back in the 80s, that band had some politically, let's say, unwise lyrics. And they're still shoving their perceived political persecution over them in everyone's faces, with their fans going as far to call themselves the modern Jews. Wow. Wow. I... I... okay. I have nothing else to add to that. That's... okay. Fucking what? Because people criticize their band. Not making this up. Mr. Uncle, in any case, was exactly that stereotype. Also a third-hand account from X Flatty. So again, a story from the mental hospital. X Flatty struggled with her mental health for years, on and off, admitted herself to a local hospital over the course of a few years, and one time she met Mr. Uncle. Mr. Uncle was insanely proud of his barely above average IQ and would constantly brag about it, whether you wanted to listen or not. Mr. Uncle, too, was a self-victimizing nice guy who would constantly complain about how bad guys are getting laid while he's still a virgin at 29. Mm, got that incel vibe going. He, like Lego Beard, would invite women into his room, which, every time, would only lead them to complain to staff, and he was successfully banned from talking to more and more patients. His appearance matched the common neckbeard trope, except that he was only skinny fat rather than fat. Otherwise, not a lot to tell about him. Just a sighting. A dude who looked exactly like the butthurt basement dweller meme from the internet of old. Only noteworthy because I was at an animation festival with a friend of mine and we're making lighthearted fun of various fandoms. We're both massive nerds and it is mostly self-deprecation. It went into bronies. Dude catches my eye and I go, speaking of bronies, nudge nudge, she turns her head and breaks down in laughter. That's about it. There are some where I was the neckbeard, but I'd rather keep them hidden from myself, but maybe one day I'll open about the awful embarrassment that is me, but not today. Today I shall only point at others and hope nobody notices the faint ass crack smell around me. <laughs> you have an interesting way with words. I like that. Oh, these were some interesting little stories, and I honestly don't mind reading a collection of short stories. It's easier when they're in a collection like this, because sometimes I'll read stories that are too short to make into one episode and then be like I'll make a bunch of them together and put them in an episode and then totally fucking forget because I'm really good at organizing you guys I don't, I don't know how this channel is still operational I keep breaking everything and somehow it keeps going but I just I think it's because I'm really determined but determination also does not mean that you know that that side of the room was on fire five minutes ago it still is but it's not as bad now I'm kidding, there's no fire. But, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I sometimes get really distracted and shit doesn't work out. However, I definitely enjoyed all of your, uh, your neckbeard stories. 
I, I do love some weird ass stories, and some of these guys sound like they have incel printed all over them. We don't really talk about the incels that much on this channel, but maybe we should. Maybe we should just a little from time to time, because they, these groups seem to intermingle quite a lot, don't they? They just kind of overlap, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of rage and no fucking going on in that one. Just a lot of rage. Personally, I think the incels would do better with their anger if they would just fuck each other. But they're not going to do that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyway, if you have a story you'd like to send me, you can do that by going to r slash moonhorse stories and posting it there. I check it every day, so I will see it. And if you would like to help me keep the lights on in here, the first thing you could do is turn that switch on. It's on. I don't really know. That was a stupid joke. Anyway, you could donate to Patreon, or you could buy stuff in the merch store. There's new stuff in the merch store. That is not a joke. I actually did do that the other day. I was adulting and took care of proper things. Proud of myself. And if you'd like to come hang out with me, just in general, there's a live stream every Saturday. A lot of times we play video games and talk about silly shit. So you're more than welcome to come hang out with me then. Uh, I'd appreciate it. I think it's cool. And as always, I love you all so very much. And I'm so happy that you're here. We are very quickly approaching 2,000 subs. I think I just dated this video. Whatever. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Be fucking awesome forever. That's my directive to you. I, I'm pointing like you can see me. Whatever. I'm going to end this video before I get stupider. Okay. I love you all. Goodbye. Bye. I'm over here now. Bye.